Hey YouTube, this is Zach with Achilles Financial, and today we're going to be talking about J.P. Morgan Chase after they announced their Q3 financial results this past Friday on October 13th. Now, J.P. Morgan is an impressive company. They are also the largest financial institution in the United States, and I want to call out a few different items here. The first is going to be that they had Q3 net income of $13.2 billion. That's up year over year by about 13% and earnings per share of $4.33, also up materially. Now, it's also important to note that their expenses are now at $21.8 billion. Again, very large company, meaning you're going to be dealing with very large numbers. One of the things that is putting downward pressure in Q3 versus Q2 on the net income is the increase in interest expense. Admittedly, due to the sheer volume of their deposit base, I'm actually surprised that we're not seeing a larger increase in the net non-interest or rather the interest expense line item and we are seeing a sizable increase in the interest income side so that means as they're originating new loans those loans are coming in at those higher interest rates now this company continues to maintain average loans greater than one trillion and their total assets are still sitting around two trillion in total assets so this is a massive company now, it's important to note as we come down below, you can see that net interest income. Again, this is going to be that interest income minus interest expense. You can see these numbers right here. When you're looking at FR impact, that is going to be the First Republic, which is going to be the bank that they assumed earlier this calendar year on a very sweetheart deal. Now, it's important to note you can see down here in their credit cost that they are maintaining charge-offs. However, again, the charge-offs, while increasing, are normalizing back to levels seen in 2019 on a percentage basis, and they actually drop their reserve despite the fact that those charge-offs are increasing at this point in time. So you can see, again, the company is continuing to perform very well despite a minor increase in charge-off activity. Now, on a go-forward basis, those earnings per share continue to be very, very strong on a quarter over quarter, year over year basis. Now, if we come down below, JP Morgan is always very focused on this Fortress balance sheet. Now, there are a lot of capital metrics in here which are related to banks and what I would describe as their rainy day fund. And what we're showcasing here is that despite the fact that there is concerns about commercial real estate charge-offs, primarily in the office space, that our largest financial institutions, companies such as JP Morgan Chase, are more than well equipped to be able to control and to handle any increase in charge-off experience. And this is one of the reasons why Jamie Dimon always refers to his Fortress balance sheet. So the company continues to perform very, very well. Now, if we come down below, you can actually split it out on the consumer, commercial, and investment banking side. And the main focal point that I wanted to look at is gonna be the credit cost and the net charge-off experience. This is coming associated with, again, a normalization of charge-off experience, particularly in consumer credit cards. So you can see credit cost of $1.4 billion. Those charge-offs that you're seeing up here, up year over year by $720 million. And that is continually driven by that card services, which again are going to be credit cards. This is not super surprising, once again, given the current macroeconomic environment and the fact that borrowers and consumers have been flush with cash the past couple of years. So this normalization is further evidence that the COVID money and those COVID savings are beginning to go away. So the question going forward is what do we expect to see associated with this net charge off activity on a forward looking basis? Down below, you're going to see, I'm going to skip the corporate side and go on the commercial. Now, once again, we've got those credit costs. You can see down below that net charge-offs were about 50 million in this pool. There's going to be additional reserves being built as they're looking at loans. I would assume this is due to stress testing of some of those larger CRE loans, recognizing that as those loans repriced to much higher interest rates, it's going to have a negative impact on those individual loans. And that's gonna be tied out to CNI loans as well as CRE loans. And this is impressive that they are continuing to grow despite the macroeconomic environment. So if I come down below, there are a few things that I would highlight. They're expecting charge-off activity to continue to normalize, which means it's going to go up. But they were not ringing the alarm bells at this point in time. They're looking forward or expecting on the full year basis, so inclusive of Q4, net interest income of nearly $90 billion dollars. 
that market dependent note is going to be dependent upon if there are additional interest rate changes in Q4. Then you can also see that net interest income excluding the market side of that 89 billion. So there's going to be a lot of moving parts, but overall I'm expecting JP Morgan to continue to perform incredibly comfortable on a go forward basis. Some of the additional notes and information can be tied out in the presentation here, and you can find this information on the JP Morgan Investor Relations website. All in all, JP Morgan continues to perform very, very well, and I expect to see that reflected in the stock price over the coming weeks and months. Despite the fact there is a lot of concern in the banking space over liquidity, I don't think that JP Morgan is going to be the one that suffers at a very high level. So if you found this content helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.